Let's go through the embroidery functions of the Bernina 570 Quilters Edition and embroidery machine. Now, if you don't have an embroidery unit yet, remember this is a machine you can add it on to. So let's start by just bringing up a design on screen so we can kind of see where those functions are. We're gonna go over the items on the side and then also by touching the eye, there are functions in this area. So let's start over here. In the top area is our tension. Notice it's a lot lower than when we're sewing. Sewing tension is somewhere in the four or five range, but when it comes to embroidery, you see that it starts at 3.0. That means that we want the top thread to pull to the back side, and the bobbin thread is in charge of making sure that that thread is pulled all the way around so we get the prettiest looking stitch on the top. Do remember that if you see any bobbin thread coming up on top of your fabric, that we can touch that while we're in the embroidery uh, stitch out mode and reduce that down. Now, over time, if you haven't had your machine serviced for a while, you'll definitely want to have it serviced annually because tensions do loosen up. So if you start to see bobbin thread often, more often, more often, it just needs to be serviced. Everything get, kind of gets set back to normal. The next one down is your foot you're using. When you put foot number 26 on, do make sure you go in and select stitch number 26, and it should be yellow in those numbers here. The hoop, your design will come up in the hoop size that it fits in. Now, if you are using a different size hoop, you'll need to come in and identify which hoop you're using so the machine can double check that you're not gonna stitch outside the edges. It won't let you do that. So for example, this is the oval hoop, the biggest one that comes with this machine. There is a larger hoop that you can get called a midi hoop. You can see the playground gets bigger and then also the super long one, the mega hoop is also available for this machine. There's also a few other smaller ones a small hoop and a hat hoop concept there. So I'm gonna leave it on oval hoop for what we're working with. Next, if you have put on the straight stitch throat plate, make sure you've identified that. A straight stitch throat plate does work better with embroidery, giving you better stitch quality. It is an option for this machine. Next, this is yellow. This is yellowed because the feed dogs are lowered. For any reason you haven't lowered your feed dogs yet uh, and you try to embroider that symbol, a message will come up on your screen to make sure that you push on the button on the side of your machine all the way so it stays indented. And next is the bobbin low indicator. So if you do start to see that blinking, find a stopping place and change your bobbin out. Now, functions over here on this side of the screen. We do see that our design is in place. If we wanna add another design or a letter or a monogram, touch that little plus button, and then we can bring in another design and it sits right next to what we've done. And if you don't want that, we can come back and touch the trash can and it will remove that from the screen. So if you wanna bring in letters or more than one design at a time, touch the plus, it lets you go get your design and bring it in. The eye for information, it kind of hides some of the symbols when you don't need it. And then when we bring it open, these are the ones I really wanted to focus on. So for moving your design around your hoop, you can touch and drag it. And you can also use the knobs and move it slightly inward or around. Here's the trick. If you touch the yellow box of a number that you've moved it to, it goes back to its default setting. So anything that's yellowed has been changed and you can easily unchange it as well. Touch the eye at the top to come back one level so we can get to the next function. This one's rotation. And I would say I probably use the, the 90 degree rotation the most. I know it won't be seen much on this particular design, but it's a quick way to rotate the design on its side or um, upside down and such. I can touch that uh, yellow box and it turns it back to normal. If you turn the dials, you'll see that you'll get ink each increment so you can dial it in exactly where you want it to be. I'm gonna to touch that and bring it back to normal. And how about for fun, bring it back to the center of the, the hoop again. Sizing, let's talk about sizing on a Bernina. This is wonderful. When you size a design bigger or smaller, it adds and 
or reduces stitches. So it gets it to be not as dense if you've pushed it smaller. And of course, if you enlarge it, it's adding stitches to the final stitch count. So it'll take longer for it to sew. In here, you notice there's a lock. If you unlock it, that means that you could make the design more stretched in one direction, or we can make it really skinny too. Look at that. We can make that fit into more of a rectangular area for quilting. I'm gonna put that back to normal as well. If you wanted to do proportional sizing, make sure that lock is on. Okay, next, uh, we are to mirror image. Okay, not a big change with this design, but we have mirror image left, right, and mirror image up, down. And if you ever forget one of these, touch the question mark and then touch the symbol, and it'll remind you what it's called. Here, we can duplicate it, so whatever's on screen, it's gonna give us a second one. Uh, easy way, instead of going back and bringing it in, it'll just duplicate it for you. This is the trash can we used earlier. Let's go ahead and delete that off. Um, check, check will allow you to, so at first it wants me to take the hoop off the machine. That's what the arrows are for. So it can calibrate the embroidery arm, and then I can touch check. Check is gonna go around the outside perimeter. Now it wants the hoop on so it can move around and it will check that I have put it on. Here is where we can see how big, where that is actually gonna stitch, where the center is, and if we need to move it, this is how you can get it active. So if you have a point right even over here, that's your center, that you can actually then move the needle to be right over the point you've marked on your fabric. So you do go into that positioning area and then it does show us where we've actually moved it to. So that's the check area. And then this is actually a density change. On this screen, you've got two options to change the stitch type. This one here will adjust the density. So if the satin stitch isn't covering up your fabric enough, you can actually increase and make it have more stitches, or you can actually change a satin stitch to a fill stitch. So instead of stitches becoming really long, if, especially if you've spread something out or enlarged it, those stitches can get kind of on the long side. You have an option with just a little switch of the toggle to change it from satin stitch to fill stitch. Fill stitches are when the stitches go back and forth and fill it in instead of one long jump side to side. So we have quite a few things. Hopefully you'll try them out. We do have our Embroidery Essentials online course where you can learn lots of different techniques. Check out the links below where we can let you preview over 20 videos for free to see if this course is right for you. So if you wanna go from zero to hero, these 15 embroidery techniques will walk you through everything you need to learn about all these functions and the way to use your machine correctly so it's super easy every time you sit down to embroider.